Hello and welcome to the Root Gospel Ministries. We're so glad you're here. I'm Josh and this is Sam. Our mission includes spreading the gospel, cultivating fellowship, and pointing to Christ, all while incorporating the Word of God to help serve God, community, and the world. Hello everybody, thank you for joining in today. My name is Sam Fulton with the Root Gospel Ministries, and today we're going to be talking about how to read the Bible. Um, this is going to be video three of our three video series on the Bible. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity to check out the first two videos, I recommend you do so. They're on this channel. Uh, the first one is what is the Bible? The second was why we should read the Bible. And then we're wrapping up today with how to read the Bible. Okay. So before I get started, I want to make it clear that this might have been the hardest video for me to put together. Uh, the hardest message to come up with simply because you know there wasn't a lack of content there was an excess of content there are so many different ways and so many individualized personal ways that people can read the bible um, and to come up with everything would have been pretty much impossible so there's a lot to cover here and i'm not going to be able to cover all of it uh, however i did do my best to collect all of the best and most important methods and ways to approach and read the Bible. So, you know, there will be a lot that I'm sharing with you, and some of this will not be relevant to you. Um, most of it will, in some sense, and help you navigate your journey and how to read the Bible. But there's going to be, you know, some discernment on your behalf. The, the individual uh, gets to choose how they specifically and personally want to read the Bible in the way that best benefits them and makes their Bible reading journey the most effective and the most productive, okay? So, now we're going to go and dive into the message. Uh, I'll, I'll start us with prayer first. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this day, and thank you for this opportunity to uh, speak about your word, and just share the joy and the wonders of the Bible with, with people. And uh, I pray that you bless this message. I pray that you bless the listener, uh, that this can really be helpful and uh, you know, help change their Bible reading habits for the better. Um, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross and be risen from the grave so that we can be reconciled to you, that, that we can no longer uh, be living in our sin, but we can be living in Christ. So I, I thank you for that, and again, just pray that you bless this message. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. All right, so I'm going to start with a reading from Job chapter 23, verse 12. It says, I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. So, I'm going to start us off with a question. Do we read scripture like it is a treasure or like it is a chore? Right? So, there's going to be two main directions we can take when answering the question of how to read the Bible. Um, the first is going to be the way we approach it. Um, the kind of the way that we prepare our heart to read. And then the second is going to be methods that we use to effectively read the Bible. So it's kind of going to be one is focused on the heart and one is going to be focused on the mind. So the most important thing that you can do uh, before you even open up your Bible is to pray about it. Okay? So, you know, we, we want to meet God in the Word. We want to invite Him in. We want to ask that He prepare our hearts to read. We want to ask that He meets us in the Word. We want to ask for understanding. We want to pray a prayer of thanks because the Bible is a gift. Um, so that is the most important thing that you can do right off the bat. All right. Now, once you're ready to kind of roll into getting a reading plan together and how you want to approach this, what you need to do is just commit to it. I know for a lot of people, they look at the Bible. It's a thick book. There's a lot of pages. And it can be intimidating. And, you know, you see these 66 different books with all these chapters and verses and different stories and different time periods and all these pages. And it can be intimidating. And you don't know where to start. And because you don't know where to start, you just don't. So what I encourage you to do is simply make a commitment to just open up the Bible and read. Um, that, that is essentially step number one. So what I compare it to is like getting into a cold pool. If you tow your way in, you're kind of going to you know, feel the temperature and want to get back out. So you just got to dive all the way in and trust that everything is going to be fine. Um, it's the same way with the Bible. You, know, you might not 
exactly know how to approach it at first, which this video is here to help with. But uh, you just got to dive in and trust that, that that'll come, um, especially if you pray about it. So, now, the way we want to approach the Bible is with an open mind and an open heart. And we want to do so humbly, okay? Because, you know, we read the Bible because it is a gift from God that helps us serve Him, that helps us grow in our relationship. Um, if we read it arrogantly, relying on our own intellect, then things aren't going to go well. We, we need to have a childlike spirit and read it humbly, okay? We also need to have an excitement when reading the Bible because, you know, I've already said it two or three times in this video, but it is a gift. Um, this is an excellent way to meet God um, through his word. It, it is an excellent way to grow in that relationship, which is something that should be exciting to all of us as Christians. Um, we should be ready to read and we should be ready to learn. And uh, kind of the analogy for that is our approach to the Bible should be like a wife reading a husband's letter from a distant land. And, you know, I, I think like wartime back in World War II, you know, if you're back home getting a, a letter for, from a loved one who's overseas in the Pacific, in Europe, and, you know, they're in the face of danger, the first thing you do when you look at the mailbox and get that letter is, you know, you're going to get right to reading it, and you're going to be excited to do so, and you're going to cherish it. And that is the same approach we should take to the Bible. In Deuteronomy 32, verse 47, it says, They are not just idle words for you. They are your life. By them you will live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. So what we can take from this is that we should have a desperation and a desire for the Word of God. Um, we should have a desire to understand what it says. And, but we should also, at the same time, recognize that there are going to be things that we don't understand at first. But we need to trust that through perseverance, we will come to learn it. In Psalms 119, verse 4, it says, You have laid down your precepts that are to be fully obeyed. So as we read scripture, we should have a spirit of obedience within us. Okay? Um, I think it's also important to note, I kind of hinted at this earlier, but you know, with, with most reading, it just takes your brain. You use your mind and you read it. With scripture, it's going to be an exercise of both your brain and your heart. Um, so you need to have both of those prepared whenever you're reading scripture. Now, as you prepare to read, you need to have a plan, uh, an actual approach, because like I said, it's a very, there, there's a lot to the Bible. It's a complex book. So you need to have an approach to it. You need to have a game plan set out. Um, so first and foremost, your plan should be organized so that you make sure that you are reading everything in the Bible. I know there are a lot of different plans that will leave out pieces here and there and maybe focus on the feel-good messages or the certain things that you might need to hear. You need to make sure that you are reading all of Scripture, okay? It does not matter where you start. The Bible is not just one book. It is a collection of books. So you can start in any, any of those books, um, but make sure that you at some point are going to be reading all of Scripture. You should also be reading every day. As Joshua 1.8 says, Keep this book of law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so you may be careful to do everything written in it. So that kind of covers both of those, reading everything and reading daily. Um, as you get prepared to read, you are going to need to pick a translation. There are a lot of different translations of the Bible. Um, my first recommendation from, I'd say, almost everyone watching this video is pick an English translation. I think that's going to be a good step one. Um, make sure that whatever uh, translation you pick is going to be accurate and understandable. For me personally, I like the NIV. I've been reading that ever since I was a kid. Um, I've gone to a lot of churches and been around a lot of people who use the ESV as well. So I recommend both of those. Um, so I already said this, but you don't need to start from the beginning of the Bible. Uh, just, it's a collection of books, not one. Just make sure that when you pick one, you read that book all the way through, because that's how it was meant to be read. Uh, that's how it was written, was so that you would read it all the way through. That's how books are read. Um, I personally recommend that you start in the Gospels. Um, the Gospels are, you know, uh, since the Bible is a map that leads to Jesus, everything points to Jesus, Starting in the Gospels helps you, helps keep you from getting discouraged if you don't reach your destination right away. Um, I know a lot of people want to start in Genesis, which is good, but then you get three books in and you're in Leviticus and Numbers and people tend to get kind of worn down and discouraged there. So um, unless you're prepared for 
some kind of dry reading, then I would not start off from the very beginning and go all the way through, especially if you're new to the Bible. So here I'm going to recommend some reading plans. Um, these are not reading plans that I came up with. They're fairly common reading plans. I encourage you, if any of these sound appealing to you, go online, look it up, do some more research, find out more about it, um, and commit to one. Pick the one that will be best for you. But there's two things that I think you should look for in a reading plan. Does it include all of scripture? And does it include daily reading? So here are a couple of the plans. There is a beginning to the end plan, simply starting in Genesis and going to Revelations. Um, there's chronological, because not everything in the Bible falls in exact chronological order. So this one would put things in order of events. Um, there is an Old and New Testament plan in which they partner reading from the Old Testament and New Testament every day. There's a prayer plan in which your scripture reading is going to be partnered with a certain prayer. Uh, there is a Bible in blank amount of days plan. It could be Bible in 365 days. It could be Bible in 100 days. Or if you're really up for a grind, it could be Bible in a week. I don't care. That's up to you. Um, there are daily audio Bibles. Uh, I do personally encourage reading, but if this is what's going to get you into Scripture, is reading or uh, listening to it, then that's obviously better than nothing. And in the world we live in, it's a really good opportunity, whether you're in the car or have headphones in, something like that, you have the chance to listen to Scripture. All right, so there are also specific plans that you can do. Um, these can be tailored towards individual interests, hobbies, lifestyles, um, age, gender. I know for me, I've seen like athletes, Bible reading plans. Um, you know, there, there's also career specific. Uh, really, really anything you can get Bible reading plans that are tailored towards you. Um, so now from, I guess, an intellectual standpoint, this is where we're going to talk about the like, mental and the, the brain approach to reading the Bible. Um, you're going to need to understand the context of what you're reading. That includes the literary context, which if you watched the first video of this series, the Bible contains a pretty wide variety of literary styles. You're going to need to understand the historical context. Um, you know, you need to bear in mind that the Bible was not written in 2020. The Bible was written a pretty long time ago. Um, so you need, you need to understand what society was like, what, what the people were like, what cultures were like, the, just the whole historical context surrounding it. And then also you need to be prepared to understand the context of the story. That's pretty simple with any reading. Um, you also want to know your purpose for what you're reading, like what it is that you are reading and why you are reading it. Um, hopefully this series is able to help with that, but that's a pretty basic place to start. Um, you want to make a plan that is going to be integrated into building positive Bible reading habits. Um, those habits are a key thing there. You know, sometimes it's tough to build these habits at first, but once you do, it changes everything. Um, you want to make sure you pick a time, a place, and the people that you are going to be reading scripture. Um, you know, when I say people, you're welcome to share this journey with those around you, um, ask questions with people, share things you read, use your resources. Um, you know, it could be any resources, it could be the, your, the people around you, like I said, it could be, you know, study guides, notebooks, uh, highlighters, like I read the Bible on my phone most of the time, and I highlight a bunch of stuff. Um, the highlighter is probably the biggest resource that I use in that. So, um, be prepared to just use your resources and use the, utilize the people around you effectively. So we are called not just to read the Bible, but to study it. In Ezra 7.10, it says, For Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord, and to teaching his decrees and laws in Israel. Okay, so we want to go beyond just reading, and we want to study. We really want to, you know, let this rest in our hearts so that we come to know it, not just gloss over words on a page. Make sure you ask questions, take notes, highlight passages. Same thing I just said. Um... Utilize your study methods and your resources. I will be sharing some of those study methods here shortly. Um, your first priority should to be to share your journey through Scripture with God. But it's also important that you share it with other people. It's a good thing. Just don't, don't keep this uh, Scripture reading to yourself. Share it with people. You know? um, ask questions and make sure that you, know, you, you can send verses to people. If you come across something that applies to you or applies to a friend, you know, share it with them. Uh, so that poses me with the question, um, who in your life 
could you share a scriptural journey with? Is there someone that you think needs to be challenged or that is in a similar walk with you that could benefit from it? Um, so here are some study methods. There is first the SOAP method. Uh, this is an acronym. The S stands for scripture. The O stands for observe. The A stands for application. And the P stands for prayer. Okay, so this is just step-by-step -step way to get the most out of the scripture you're reading. Another one is OIA. It stands for observation, interpretation, and application. All right. So those are just some ways to study. Um, again, I encourage you to go get a little more information about those on your own. I just wanted to present them to you um, so you are aware that they exist and these methods are out there so you can kind of go find them on your own. Um, we want to make sure that we also meditate on the word, not just read it, but meditate on it. Psalms 1-2 says, but those who do, whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on it, or sorry, I messed that up. Um, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. There we go. Um, so we're called to meditate on the word as well. Uh, we want to meet God in the word. I said that earlier. But we, we want to welcome him with prayer. We want, to be, we want him to be a present part of this. We want to grow with him, spend time with him, spend time just in, in peace with God, hearing from him, sharing with him. Um, because reading should strengthen our relationship and not just our knowledge. I think that's something that's really important to keep in mind. Um, so this is most of what I got for us today. I also want to encourage you guys, there's a website called, I believe it's thebibleproject.com. Might not be .com, it could be .org, I'm honestly not sure. But it's the Bible Project. We'll put it down in the uh, description below so you guys can check it out. It has a bunch of great resources for reading scripture. Um, I would love to share all those resources with you right now. However, they have hours worth of videos and I don't want to take an hour of your time today. So go check that out on your own. Um, and I'm going to close in this. James chapter 1, verse 22 says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. All right? I want to make, it, make that very clear. I'm going to read that one more time. James 1, 22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. All right? So we need to make sure that we are doing what Scripture says. That leaves me with the challenge for you to begin living your faith and doing what the Bible says. I'll go and close this in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just once more want to come before you in a prayer of thanks. Uh, just that we have the opportunity to you know, speak about your word today and, and learn about your word and listen about your word. And you know, I pray over that verse from James uh, that we can do what the Bible says, um, that we don't just read it we don't leave it at that. There's more to it than just words on a page. It should guide the way that we live. Um, and I, I just pray for strength from you that, that we can do that, because I know if we try to you know, accomplish that on our own, it will be tough. So I pray for strength. I pray for guidance, and just that we can accept the Bible not just into our minds, but into our hearts. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Again, if you haven't had the chance to watch the other videos, I encourage you to do so. Um, but I hope this video was helpful. And go out there and live your faith. Do what the Bible says. Thank you.